What I'd like to do in this video is take a look at how Revit can automatically size ductwork based on a system. There's a couple steps we need to do though. Now, what we need to do is we need to slice the ductwork in a couple spots where we want to tell Revit to size it. So we're going to resize it, but Revit won't really know where to go with it. It just knows the sizes we want based on the flow that's coming off of our diffusers. Notice that each diffuser has a flow assigned to it. We can change that flow to whatever we want. Revit won't recalculate the flow. It's our determination of what the flow is that's coming out of each diffuser. Because these flows were predefined, we're just going to accept these flows for the calculations. I'm going to hit escape a couple times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type SL for split. And we need to split our duct in certain spots. Also, if you go to the Modify tab, you'll find the split command right here on the Modify panel. So either way, if you're an icon person or if you're like me, I like to type. I'm going to type SL and I'm going to activate my split command. I'm going to come down here. And I'm just going to hit a spot right on the edge of the ductwork. Notice when the ductwork lights up, that means it'll get split. So I'm going to pick a point here. I'm going to split it right there. And without getting too crazy, I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to split this longer section right here. Then I'm going to hit escape a few times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom down to this diffuser right here. Notice when I hover over it, it highlights. If I hover over it and hit my tab key, notice that it selects the diffuser, the flex duct, and my smaller branch. If I hit tab again, notice that it selects the entire system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse off of that diffuser. I'm going to come back on top of it. I'm going to hit tab twice, then I'm going to select it. I've got the whole system selected. And this is a good spot too, because if you don't have stuff that's connected, it's not going to be highlighted. Now I'm going to click on duct pipe sizing. My sizing method, I'm going to hit the drop down here. Used to be we could only go on friction. Luckily now we can do friction, velocity, equal friction, and static regain. I'm going to grab friction. I'm going to allow all of the rest of the defaults. Branch sizing, we can match connector size, or we can go to the larger of connector and calculated. Let's do calculated size only and see what happens. Because what you can do is a lot of times your fittings are going to blow up and you have to just go back through and reconnect. You can try to avoid that, but generally it happens anyway. So constraints, my branch sizing, I'm gonna keep calculated size only. Now I'm just gonna hit okay. And sure enough, it resized everything nicely, but the tap must be attached to a duct. It shows it orange. Okay, I'm gonna close out of the warning. I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna select that fitting and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to select this branch duct. I'm going to click my grip, and I'm going to drag it right into the middle of here. Notice that it put our new fitting in. It put the little shoe in. Now what I want to do is I want to hover over this diffuser again, hit my tab key twice, and select it. Now I'd like to come up here to the System Inspector. Go ahead and click on System Inspector. On the System Inspector panel here, I want to just click the Inspect button. Now basically what I can do is, we have our flow arrows, so I'm going to hover over one of these items, and it gives us our flow, static pressure, and our pressure loss. We can go over Diffuser, it shows us what our CFM is. We can come over here and look at this one, Static Pressure. So this is going to give us any errors that we may have. So I can just kind of go through and inspect my entire system. I'm going to click Cancel here. Hit Escape a few times. So that's how Revit can automatically calculate duct sizes.